Welcome to Mastering Life's Adventures, an educational podcast about tapping into your true self, the soul, your soul, the substance of your life, to discover what life's ups and downs are really about, and how to have a greater sense of purpose, peace, joy, and fulfillment. I am Dr. Judith Holder, your host, coach, psychologist, fellow seeker who enjoys diving into the connections between spirituality, psychology, wellness, and your everyday life's adventures. All preparing and polishing you like the facets of a magnificent diamond to be your best self. If you're craving more from your life, you are in the right place. Come, let's journey together and transforming what you know into who you really are. Mastering Life's Adventures begins now. Hi, I'm back with part two. And we've been talking about It's a Wonderful Life. We're exploring movies and how they relate to soul evolution. I'm here with Christy, who is a connoisseur of movies, to discuss It's a Wonderful Life. So we're talking about George Bailey. And one of the things he says his life would be better with for him if he wasn't born. And you can listen to part one, which um, helps you to get a better understanding of what we're going to be talking about now in part two. Well, George Bailey decides that he doesn't want to be born. So Clarence, which is his guardian angel, gives him that ability to see what life would be like without him being born, which is totally different. And he's not liking the difference. And in the people that he knew that had kind hearts, that were friends, that would speak to him, who would say hi if he walked down the street, if he needed a ride somewhere. you had He had a cab, his own cab driver would drive him around. I mean, uh, everybody had a kind word for him um, to the point where Violet would go out of her way to kind of come up to him and flirt with him a little bit because she always liked him even as a child. He's now realizing that these people are not the same. Even his wife is not the same. The vibrance that she had was no, is not there because he's, he was not there. Now he's thinking that he saved his brother's life, but his brother died. So his brother was not able to fulfill his mission either because George was not there to help him to be able to do that. Hmm. Um, by saving his life. So he's realizing that a lot of things have changed and he's not liking the change. He doesn't He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have a family. Nobody knows him. He doesn't exist. And he doesn't like the fact that he doesn't exist. Especially since he already knows what his life, life was, was like. like in the past. Exactly. And now it's becoming truly a reality for him that if I really don't exist. <laughs> and just think about our soul. And our soul is kind of screaming, wanting to be your awareness of existence or wanting to be uh, visible and not invisible. But it actually is invisible if we're not giving it nurturing and caring and attention and have a develop a personal relationship to this inner wisdom this inner intuitiveness that we do have and cultivate it yeah so when he goes back he he his friend the the cab driver who doesn't recognize him asks him where he wants to go and he gives him the address he says where did what why do you want to go to that house Nobody's lived in in 20 years. Mm-hmm. He said, what do you mean? That's my house. He said, you were at my wedding. So the cab driver takes him there, and it's dark, and the windows are broken, and then nobody's, the house is a mess. And so here comes the police officer, who's also a friend of his. And the cabbie says to the, to the police officer, you know, we need to watch him because he's, there's something wrong with this man. <laughs> okay. And George is saying, but you know me. What do you mean? You know me. You know who I am. You were at my wedding. And they're just looking at him like, what do you mean at your wedding? I don't know know who you are. So the two, um, the cab driver and the police officer, the cab driver says, you know, I think he has a problem. We might have to take him somewhere. 
So George goes in the house and is running around the house and is calling his wife's name and his kids' names, and nobody's nobody's there. Um, it's an old, dilapidated yeah. how the windows are out. Uh, out, yes. everything. I mean, it's coming down. It's coming down. So, so um, the police wants the police officer wants to take him somewhere. And here comes Clarence. Clarence kind of kind of jumps in and bites or holds on to the cop's hand and tells George to run. So he's being a distraction for George to get away. And and then when uh, Clarence says, Joseph, Joseph, help me. And he disappears. The cab driver, <laughs> the cop says, wait a minute, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And, and he, the, was, he the, was calling to his heavenly father, yes, Joseph, Joseph, to, yes. to come and help him yes. in the situation. So Cabby was up in the tree and says, I need to get a drink because I can't believe my eyes. OK, he just up and vanished. And most people can't believe their eyes when they see for themselves what's happening and why it's happening. Their minds cannot absorb a spiritual vision. Mm. So it makes it more difficult for them to do. So George gets away, and then he comes, gets back up with Clarence. It's like, Clarence, I want my life back. I want my family back. I want my wife back. Help me get my family back. Clarence says, okay. Now George has is back. He goes home. He sees the tax man and the police officer. And the photographer or the newspaper, mm-hmm. they're going to arrest him because of the misappropriations of funds. George looks at him and says, okay, fine, but I got to talk to my family first. Said, Whatever you want to do, that's okay, that's okay, but I need to talk to my family first. And he goes in the house. He sees his kids and he sees his wife. What he doesn't know is that his wife had been doing her own thing while he's been out of the pocket. She's going around telling people, George is in trouble. There are people here to arrest him, and he needs money. I think the uncle tells her what was going on. I think so. Mm-hmm. So she's going around telling folks he needs money because they're going to arrest him. So then the tax man and the police officer are ready to take him away. His friends start coming in. They start putting money down. It's like, what are you doing? How do you know? How did you know? He says, well, your wife called me and told me that you needed money because there's something was misplaced. So I owe you money because you gave me money when I needed money. All of the townspeople come in and they start putting money down, the money that they can afford, and putting it down because they love him. They want to help him, and he's always been there for them. And he realizes at that point, he has more friends than he realizes. Even his friend that he couldn't get a hold of before, who is in Europe, calls his office, tells them to make available $25,000. And he's not even around. He's in Europe somewhere, just from a phone call from his wife, telling him what's going on. Tax man sees this so much so that he could dig into his own pocket and put some money on the table, which is a beautiful thing. As that goes on, George realizes that he has made a difference. People do see him. People do understand what he's been trying to do. And all of his good works and good deeds are now coming back to roost to help him to the point that Clarence because he doesn't see Clarence again, but he hears the bell ring. And his daughter says, Daddy, Daddy, an angel just got his wings. And on the table, here's Clarence's book of Mark Twain. And Clarence puts an inscription, thank you for allowing me to help you. And thank you for helping me get my wings. Yeah, very powerful story. How you have George who is so humble and readily to help where he can help and serve where he can serve in many regards. And also just a willingness to see the good in people. 
And those are all things that we're all learning how to do for our own soul evolution and not see the meanness of a potter, the meanness in people or the greediness in people, but see things as they are, but also be willing to see the greater good and hold what I said earlier in part one, that immaculate concept of the person. See that where they are and not be duped by maybe some of the behaviors you see them. But you also, or in your heart, continue to be gracious or to be kind, not to, like you said, in some ways, be bitter as the potters of the world can be and how to over, overcome that. And one of the qualities that I think, and I wonder if you think the same, that allow George to reap the rewards to come back to him was the quality of love. Mm-hmm. Not only that, he realizes that sometimes the grass may not be as green on the other side, and that his desire to leave changes to his desire to stay. So I think that really settles him down because he realizes that he has everything that he needs right there. Yeah, I think that's a great point because the desires that we have, we think they are the right desires, but they may not be the true desires that we we need to have. And some of those true desires sometimes takes a life experiences that we go through and we have to discern what is true and what isn't true. What is it that I really need versus what I want? And so he had a lot of wants of things, but when things were really taken away that he could no longer be in existence because he didn't want that, he could see, oh my God, I need these particular things in my life because they fulfill the essence of who I am. Just think about that as it relates to your soul. Our soul has certain needs too. And, but our wants are usually from our ego persona. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. And most of us have more wants than we do needs. So how do we use our life experiences? to turn things into us having a wonderful life. Are there ways in which we can do that based upon what we saw going on with George? Try to separate your wants from your needs. Look at what's more important in life. And I think that's the thing. I think we live in a fast-paced society that we don't give much thought to what would be in the best interest of our soul's path. And since we're talking about this from a spiritual standpoint, is it's like, what is the soul need? What is going to be supporting for the soul? What's going to be growing the soul? What is allowing us to learn from the experiences? Because he had a lot of despair with his uncle misplacing the 8,000 to the point that he wanted to commit suicide. And so we can have those types of experiences in our life, but how do, but do we call on God to help us? In this particular case, George did that so God can enter in. Do you think that's something when people get down and out, that's what they do? Or do you think they do other things? I think they do other things. They don't understand the connection to the point of when they have that despair, that they have any father that they can call on. Especially kids, when they don't have a good home life and they don't have parents that they could talk to. They don't know that there is someone else that they're, that's a little bit higher than this this realm and they think that they will be better in a different place than where they are because when these kids are brought up or somebody helps them or gives them a helping hand or shows them that there's somebody who's willing to accept them or talk to them and show them that there's a heavenly father they change when you separate them when you separate people from their spiritual side they have nothing to fall back on. That's a very good point. And I think that if we can raise our, our children to know that there is a spiritual side and that they can call upon their Heavenly Father, call it the Creator, the I Am Presence, the Atman, Gotama Buddha. There are so many different names that God goes by that when we can be able to teach our children, it's like George's kids. Yeah. He said, Mom, should I pray for him? Because they were a spiritual family in so many regards. 
and the other one chimes in, I'll do it too. Mm -hmm. That we don't realize the power of connection that happens through just by praying about something and to surrendering it to God's will and God's direction and God's timing. One of the things that this leads us to move into in thinking about real life adventures from the movies is, is that so often some of these movies that, especially the traditional movies, the older movies, are really giving us keys to what we need to do in our life to help us move it forward or move it along. And also be aware of the fact that life is not going to go the way we want it to go. That life is not going to happen as we vision it in our mind. And instead, it may have some curveballs that are given to us. And it's up to us to be able to take a step back and ask, what's trying to be seen here? What is it you're trying to do to help me to see here? What is it that I may need to do a little bit differently in order for me to be more in attunement with my lessons that have been being trying to be taught to me? I think there are themes that go on in our lives and that in those themes, we are trying to learn from them in order to grow from them. And I think George has certain themes go on in his life that he was learning. And when we can do it more intentionally and purposefully, then we know it makes it a little bit easier than having that particular theme or lesson continue to be repeated, you know, as a broken record in our lives. Because God is trying to teach us something. He's always trying to teach us something. Or you can think about the Father, Mother God is always trying to teach us something. The thing is, is this particular movie, I like it in the black and white better than the color. The black and white allows you to hear what's being said instead of having the bling of the color. So I would recommend to folks that they watch this movie, get the black and white. It's stronger. It's a stronger message than the color movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're talking about something that happens to all of us. Sometimes we get so um, wrapped up maybe in the colors of things. But the black and white makes you to see things crystal clear mm -hmm. a little bit more it's for what it is. And also it's how sometimes we have to be able to be aware that there's certain decisions that we have to make need to be very clearly made and not smudged in gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but maybe in that black and white is another way of thinking about it as well. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about real life adventures and, and it's the story of It's a Wonderful Life. And we thought it would be a great movie to talk and give more meaning around from a soul perspective and a spiritual, those who are walking a spiritual life, that there's more than meets the eye, and that there's some in depth and breadth to George and the values and the service and the selflessness that we've talked about this here and I've talked about in other podcasts as well that he innately did, and this is very innate to the soul. Innate, if we allow our souls to shine, there's some innate intuitive things that we do and we need to be mindful of. And we also need to be mindful of the impact that we do have on other individuals and the quality of being personable and the quality of being sensitive and the quality of being... Joyous. Yeah, are all qualities of the soul. It doesn't mean we're not going to have our ups and downs in life, but it's not about the ups and downs. It's what we do with them that really matters. So we hope you have enjoyed this uh, discussion. Thank you, Christy, for coming and being able to have this conversation. And we would want you to walk away with thinking about, if you choose to look at the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, what are the two or three keys that you want to take away from it and apply it in your life as you move into 2024. Bye for now. Take care. Thank you for joining me for this episode on Mastering Life's Adventures, being your best self through soul evolution. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I would be delighted if you would share this episode with others. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my Mastering Life's Adventures podcast. Look forward to your joining the next episode. Please leave any comments or suggestions you might have below. Bye for now.